This is the Tom Love TM4K Max Microscope. It is a 4K HDMI digital microscope. It will magnify 2000 times and comes with a lovely articulated arm. Fantastic. It has this easy to use spinny height adjustment, which is really useful. And on the back, we can take five volts from it if we want to plug anything else in like a light. We can plug in USB to charge it. It has space for a micro SD card and a HDMI out. Until now, I've been using this seven inch digital microscope also from Tom Love. It's obviously much less capable as the one I just showed you, but it works absolutely fine for small assemblies like this. As you can see, the image quality is pretty good for a small, nifty, relatively cheap device. Here it is in um, proportion with the 4K video that you're watching. But let's zoom in and let's have a little look how it seems with different lighting. You can see that this is fine. You can work with this to solder small projects. As soon as the projects get any bigger, you start to have trouble because the arm is not articulated, it's fixed, and you just cannot get the microscope over all the parts of a larger board. So enter the 4K Max microscope, which I've just received. All you continuity critics out there, yes, I filmed the promo shots after I unboxed it. Well, hey, let's have a look. So it has a nice big metal flat base and a big bar that screws into the back. Onto the bar, you put the articulated arm and on the end of the arm, you put the screen. Getting a bit busy now. I'm gonna move the camera in a second. So that's it assembled, nice and easy. It does come with all the cables you need and a remote, which is wireless, very nice. So there it is, this is the first time I turned it on. I've noticed it's come pre-loaded with a 64 gigabyte SD card, thanks for that. And here's a comparison. Yes, the new one is quite the upgrade. It's obviously taking up a large amount of space in my small workshop, but thankfully I'm working on a bigger workshop and it's gonna have a lovely little spot on the new workbench. So I'm just messing around with it. You can see it has a digital zoom, that's pretty nifty. And um, I'm just trying to adjust the height here. So I'm moving in for a closer look. Uh, as I did say, there is a twizzly knob you can turn to adjust the height, but that only has so much range. So you do need to move the arm up and down the bar to get really close up. The picture quality is amazing. We're gonna have a look at it now. So here we are with the uh, microscope at the top of the arm. And this is the digital zoom going in and out quite useful. Let's have a look at it zoomed in when I had it much lower down and the detail is fantastic. This isn't um, blown up in any way, it is 4K which it's putting out and the quality is just amazing. This is me figuring out what these white splotches are. It's the silk screen and I did make the silk screen too small on this board so we're going to redesign it and make it a bit thicker because our little chip guy is only just hanging on to dear life. Now, there is a capacitive touch sensitive light bar. I love that. That's just for adjusting the brightness of the light. And that's really nice. Just a nice little extra feature. Anyway, what are we going to build with it? We're going to build the reactive device interface, which we saw in the previous video. This is a device which plugs into the back of the ZX Spectrum and is basically an Arduino. And you can read data from the Spectrum and do stuff with it. So what are we going to be soldering? This is an 80 Mega 32U4 chip. It's the same microcontroller which we find on the Arduino Micro. There's a reset switch around it. There's a 16 megahertz crystal and a couple of load capacitors and various other capacitors and resistors and a MOSFET, which I parroted off the Arduino Micro schematic and it doesn't work. This thing will only work if the USB power is applied. So I need to actually put some thought into the power circuit in the next design. Down here, we've got a logic chip. It's a 74LS02, which is just for two input and all gates. Here is a two by three pin header, so we can flash our microcontroller using USB. Here's a bunch of logic, which we use to latch the address and data bus from the ZX Spectrum, so we can read it into the microcontroller. And this is our USB port. Uh, there's also a couple of resistors around this, couple of capacitors, just to get the power and data hooked up from the USB. All right, let's make a start. But first, let me just say a quick thank you to the video sponsor, PCBWay, who kindly provided the prototypes of the reactive device interface that we're about to build. The process of ordering was extremely simple, extremely helpful customer service, and the service is second to none. Go and check them out. I'm going to do this with solder paste and hot air, and then flux and a little bit of drag soldering to neaten everything up. 
this isn't the fastest way to do it, but it's a way that I can do it and be sure that I haven't bodged anything. So starting with U4 and U5, which are 74LS257 chips, we'll place them both in and get the hot air on it. I always use too much solder paste, so of course this time I ended up using too little, but that's okay, we're gonna even everything out with the solder tip and a bit of flux. So here we go, I'm just dragging along there. Flux is boiling and spitting everywhere, I don't know if that's a bad thing or not, but the joints are looking good, and that's the main thing. Let's continue with the other rows of pins. I can see a blob of solder which has formed at the foot of U4, we're going to tidy that up as well while we're going around, we don't want any solder blobs rolling around. Now let's clean this up and dry it off and have a look, and I think that looks quite neat. So moving on to U6, which is a wider package, we're going to do the same thing. There's the hot air going in, let everything melt and form some nice joints, let it cool, bit of flux on, and we drag left and right, adding a little bit of solder if we need to, or dragging off any solder bridges. I say that, but I still haven't got the knack of dragging the solder bridges off, as you'll see later we need to reach for the wick. But the joints, I think, are looking quite nice. So let's move on to the other logic chips. Don't worry, we're going to accelerate this footage, you don't need to see every single pin being soldered. So U1, U2, U3 are all 7.4 LS374 chips, and in the next design of this, these are going to be the only logic chips involved in the latching of the data in the address bus because I've realised the design can be heavily optimised. So that's going to be neat, it's going to give me some room to put a protection diode on to stop USB from back feeding the spectrum. I think I need that, maybe the MOSFET will prevent that. I don't know, I need to look at it a bit more carefully. Anyway, moving on with the hot air, let's get U3 soldered in place. That's looking pretty good, I'm going to clean it again, I probably don't need to clean it every time, I'm just being overly cautious. By the way, let's have a break and look at solder paste under the microscope. I think that's really cool, I had the microscope on really far up close, I couldn't get much closer to it, and we can see all the individual little blobs of solder in there contained by the paste, that's quite nice I think. Let's do that a bit more, we're going to look at some more stuff under the microscope as we're going along. Anyway, back to U1, I've got it in place, you can see that a couple of the joints are a little bit low on solder, so we'll just drag it about, make it look a bit nicer. Which leaves us with U7, which is our NOR gates. Uh, that's just a little chip, we're just going to solder that on the same way we have been doing, because we're getting into a bit of a flow with it. You can see our little mascot there in the silk screen. He's probably a good size, but the text underneath I think is too small, so I'll need to blow that up a little bit in the next iteration of this board. Okay, what about our microcontroller? This is probably the trickiest chip to do, but I'm not too worried. I mean, why would it be any more difficult than everything else? We'll just follow the same process, get it roughly in place, heat it up, it'll snap into position, and drag around tidying up all the joints. The pins are a bit smaller and a bit more close together than the chips we have been soldering, so inevitably I ended up with quite a few bridges to deal with, and I had to get the wick out because I still haven't got the knack of dragging those bridges off. Let's have a look at the wick under the microscope. That's cool, isn't it? I've tried to pick bits where it's you know partially got solder in and partially not. That's quite nice to look at. Anyway, back to the microcontroller, and it's in place with no solder bridges and all the joints are made. Later on, I'm gonna get a bit uncomfortable with a couple of those joints not looking like they have as much solder on as the others and add a little bit. But for now, let's put our crystal on. This is 16 megahertz. It's the same one which is used on the Arduino Micro. It's got four pads underneath, and I'm just doing a quick continuity check to make sure I haven't shorted anything on those pads which I can't see, because they're sitting right underneath the crystal. And that allows us to move on to the load capacitors. These just go to ground from uh, each leg of the crystal, and I'll put these capacitors in place as well around the microcontroller. I think these are just decoupling capacitors. So, a few of them in place. Speeding things up now because these are a bit more boring, I'm just popping them in place and using the hot air and the solder paste as I did with the chips. Let's look at something else interesting just for the hell of it. I picked a tiny little flower up when I was walking down the canal earlier on today. I've googled it and I think it's called a speed well. Anyway, I wanted to zoom in and I quite like the texture you can see on the petals. There's no way you could see that with your bare eyes. 
And this part, I think, from Googling is called an anther, and I think that's pollen on it. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. I've fitted the useless MOSFET and I'm just tidying up those joints I mentioned on the AT Mega chip. Moving on, we've got a whole bunch of passives to put in here, so let's get on with these last few fiddly bits. Let's put this row of resistors in, these are related to the reset circuit, uh, oops, let's put that back in place, um, and some stuff around the USB port. I didn't have D1, I must have forgot to order it, but I think it's just some kind of sort of flyback over the reset switch, and I'm just going to take the risk with that, I don't think I need it to, to test the prototype. I've also sold it in place the resettable fuse, which protects the USB, and I think I might put one of them on the ZX Spectrum side in the next iteration. There's the USB connector going in, it's a vertical USB-C connector, it's not fully populated, it's just everything we need to communicate with our chip and give power to the board. Just tidying up these joints a little bit, and we can get on to the through-hole components. So as I mentioned earlier, J2 is a 2x3 header, this enables us to flash our microcontroller, it's a pretty standardised arrangement of pins, and you can buy devices from the internet, which I'll show you in a minute, which plug in. There it is. This is a AVR, no, it's a USB ASP device, I think. And there's our 2x3 socket on the end that plugs straight into the board, as I'll show you now. And the USB goes into the PC, and we should be able to flash the microcontroller very easily. You can even do it from within the Arduino IDE, which is how I'm going to do it. So that goes in there. The USB goes in the computer. This is what it looks like, the device, it has its own little microcontroller on it and a crystal and all kinds of bits. I'm not going to pretend to understand this, I've not studied it. And here I'd plugged it in, got the macro lens out to show you it flashing and LED, the LEDs blinking on and off and stuff like that. But it didn't work and I wasted a whole evening on this, so I had to sit back and stare at the schematic. Here's our header, and you can see we've got MISO, SCK, Reset, 5V, MOSI and Ground and these go into these pins on the microcontroller. You may also notice that these are shared with DAT1, 2 and 3. And where does DAT1, 2 and 3 come from? They come from our logic chips which are latching in the address in the data bus. Now these logic chips are not being disabled at this point while we're flashing it. There's a lot of floating inputs and um, we're going to have to disable it because otherwise they're driving those lines and we're just getting garbage when we're trying to flash the microcontroller. I was happy to realise that, and for this case, uh, on this board, I didn't have an easy solution other than to tie the output enable pins to high, which will disable the outputs. This is the error I was getting from AVR Dude, by the way, if anyone's interested. And this is how I'm going to sort this problem out. I'm going to tie the output enables high. Luckily, they're right next to the 5 volt supply on U4 and 5. That was easy. I did have to use a cable on U6 because there are two output enable pins. But once I'd done this, um, the outputs were disabled, they were set to high impedance, and I was able to flash it. So I flashed it with the Arduino Micro firmware, and I was able to then communicate with it. So let's test it. I've wrote a little program here which counts from 1 to 255, and writes it to memory address 55555. I'm going to run my code I wrote for the previous prototype, on the microcontroller and read out the results in the serial monitor and it should tell me that the data at address 55555 is counting from 1 to 255 so let's watch. And yes, the device is working, it's reading the contents of the memory address that we're interested in. Fantastic, it works, but this isn't very fun so I'm going to modify the LED strip code I made for Matic Miner and show it working on the first manufactured prototype of the reactive device interface, which will be monumental. So let me go and make that code now. Fast forward two days of debugging, that was much less straightforward than I expected. I had multiple problems getting in my way to producing the final video for this, uh, this demonstration. First of all, there was a microscopic short on one of the pins on the AT Mega chip, so half the time I was only reading odd addresses. Second of all, the um, microcontroller kept getting itself in a bit of a tiz with the interrupts and it would become an unrecognized USB device, sometimes completely losing communication over USB altogether, and I had to do a lot of fiddling around to figure out the peculiarities of working with the AT Mega chip so I could actually get it to do what I wanted it to do. 
on top of that there was a bug in the bloody code. Anyway I got there in the end, so here we go, this is the demonstration of the manic minor code running. And by the way, this was one of those jobs that makes your desk look like this kind of mess where all of your tools are out and there's bits everywhere and you're t starting to lose track and lose your mind. Here it is working anyway, and you might notice I've added this blue LED countdown feature. So this is conveying the information which wasn't being conveyed before that the cell that the air gauge is up to kind of slowly disintegrates before it moves to the next one. I tried to achieve that by dimming the last LED which was lit, I couldn't get it to work so instead I decided to light up all of the blank LEDs blue and count down in a proportionate amount of time until the LED disappears which are up to. So here we're up to the last LED and bang we're dead, we start a new level. So that works kind of well and I'm just going to play this whole thing back in fast forward so you can see, well you can get the gist of it. So I'm super pleased with that, I can't believe it works. There's a few things to do in the redesign, I definitely need to remove those three unnecessary chips, figure out the power situation, maybe I'll use a um, regulator and use the 9 volt input off the edge connector, that might be a good idea and put the load onto the plug and something to switch between or to manage USB and edge connector power. On top of that we need to address the problem of flashing the 80 mega chip so I need to figure out something with some pull up resistors to disable the chips which were interfering with it. Anyway I want to hear what you would do with this thing, I'm going to release the Gerbers as soon as I have a design that I'm happy with so keep an eye out for that and thanks Tom Love for sending me the microscope, thanks PCBWay for sponsoring and thank you for watching.